I'm in the middle of the village of Chipping in Lancashire and I'm standing at the top of the highest building, the tower of the parish church. In fact, the only thing higher than I am is the old weathercock up there. You can see the whole of the village from up here. From this side, you can see the older part of the village. The stone houses with lots of chimney pots. Down there's the graveyard, and beyond it, the brook which runs through the village. On this side, you can see a new factory and the modern houses. Look how small their chimneys are. And you can see that fields and hills surround the whole village. Now we're going to try to find out what life used to be like in the village in the past. We could find some clues here in the churchyard by looking at what's written on the gravestones. If it could talk, this old yew tree could tell us a lot. It's been here for hundreds of years. Look how it's propped up. But I want to go down to the middle of the village and see what clues we can find there. It hasn't changed much since this photograph was taken over 70 years ago. The main differences are that the road's not paved and there are no street lights. It's the main street in the village, but it's very narrow, isn't it? You can see the doorways are very low in these old houses. And the windows and the window panes are very small. There's a date above this doorway, 1675. And the one here is a bit faint, 1672. The date stones tell us how old these houses are. Look at the chimney pots. You saw these before from the church tower. There are so many that the houses must have had a fireplace in every room, even the bedrooms. Through the archway here are some more houses in a courtyard. The doorways and windows should tell you that they're old houses. So do their lavatories outside across the yard. Now let's have a look at one particular house in the main street. We know more about this house than any of the other old houses in the village because of this stone set in the wall, which tells us that it was the house of John Brabin. I'll read it out for you. The house of John Brabin, founder of Chipping School and almshouses. Almshouses are houses for old people. And the Latin writing here tells us that he died in A.D. 1683. They put the stone on the wall really to remind people of the things that John Brabin did for the village. Part of what was John Brabin's house is now used as a post office and village shop. But there's enough left of it inside to give us an idea of what it was like 300 years ago. Look how low down the doorway is. Here's the old oak door with its latch and wooden bolt. And look how low these old oak beams are. People in the past were generally smaller than we are today and that may be why the doorways and the ceilings are so low. This is the old village school in Chipping and it was built by John Brabit. It's no longer used, and the children go to a bigger and more modern school down the road. You can see from the worn stone here, and from the metal studs in the doorway, that this is an old building. But how do I know it's a school? Well, up there, above the doorway, you can see some writing. It says, this school founded by John Brabin, gentlemen. Then there's a Latin motto. He was a rich man, and he left the money for those three cottages to be built for old people. They're called almshouses. Here's his name and the date on the wall.
Chipping streets were built for horses and carts, not for modern traffic. You can see that there isn't much room for this lorry to get through. It's carrying huge logs of wood. You'll see them again later on. You can often find interesting things in a village if you get off the main road and come down one of the little side streets, like this one. For example, here's the cover of a coal cellar. The coal cellar's down here, and they have this heavy cover on it so that people don't fall in. When the coalman delivers the coal, all he has to do is lift the lid and tip the coal down the chute there. If your house is an old one, you've probably got a coal cellar like this. And here you can see how the streets were cobbled in the days before they used tar, and how the streets were drained. And on the wall up there, you can see some interesting windows. Look how small they are. It must be very dark inside the houses. Once they could only make small panes of glass, and they cost a lot of money. People even bought some kinds of glass you could hardly see through, like this one, because they were cheaper. Sometimes you see old windows which have been filled in. And here's something else off the main road. Along here is a house that used to be the village police station. Look at those spikes sticking up from the wall. Can you guess what the wall and spikes were for? Well, this was once a prison yard. Now we're inside the yard, you should be able to see what the wall was for. The prisoners from the jail would be allowed to exercise themselves in this yard, and they built the high wall here so that they wouldn't escape, and to make further sure, they put the iron spikes on top. And I spotted something else interesting near here. In the nursery rhyme, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, but the boys and girls in Chipping wouldn't go up a hill. Every day, before they went to school, they'd have to come down these steps and get their water from the village spring down here. You've only got to look at these steps to see how worn they are. This is how all the people in Chipping had to get their water before they had steps in their houses. When people needed a lot of water, say on wash day, they used to buy it. You can see on this old photograph a barrel of water being taken round the village to be sold. The villagers would get their water from the brook as well as from springs. But water from the brook also drove machinery. And there used to be a corn mill here which ground corn into flour. And the machinery was driven by this water wheel. wheel drove this big iron wheel inside the building. The iron wheel was made with teeth on it and it's these teeth which drive the millstones and the millstones which grind the corn into flour. This piece of film shows how the shaft drives the top millstone round against the bottom one. The stones grind the corn between them like this to make flour. This is one of the two millstones which ground the corn into flour. You can see it's very big. In fact, most millstones end up like this, as an ornament in somebody's garden. And that's where you might see one, if you look carefully enough. I found the other millstone out here in the backyard, leaning against a tree trunk. In this one, you can see clearly the hole that the shaft went through. 
I think this must have been the bottom stone because on the back you can see the grooves which have been cut for the flower to run out. Chipping is a small place, but it has three public houses in the main street. That's because travellers used to stay at the inns before they set out on their journey over the hills. Look carefully at the main street again. You haven't seen many shops in the village. This looks like a private house, but in fact it's been made into a butcher's shop. At one time, they not only sold meat in this shop, but they killed their own animals round the back. Let's go round there and have a look. It's very narrow along here, so that the animals couldn't scatter, and so that they had to come through one at a time. Here's the slaughterhouse, where the animals were killed. And to wash everything down after the slaughter, the butcher used water from this little spring in the wall. And round here is where the cattle were herded in. So you see, the villagers used to depend less on the outside world for their food than they do today. This isn't just a duck pond. There used to be lots of mills around chipping, and this is a mill pond where they used to store the water which came through here to drive the water wheel in this old mill. In fact, the water wheel isn't used anymore, and the mill has been turned into a furniture factory. Do you remember the huge logs of wood you saw going through the village? Well, here they are, ready to be made into chairs and tables. But first they have to be cut up and then sawn into planks. The chair frames are made by machines, but the chair bottoms are made by hand. The men use rushes which have been soaked in water to make them soft. They then twist the rushes together and they weave them round the frame. Next they stuff straw under the rushes to pad the seat. This isn't a new way of making chair bottoms, it's a very old way. In the old days, many people in chipping used to earn their living making chair bottoms in this way. But they did the work in their houses, not in a factory. You've seen that lots of things in chipping have changed, but one thing hasn't changed. Get back, Nell. Oh, oh, oh. At the end of the day, oh, oh. the farmer still goes out with his dog to call the cows in for milking, just as farmers round here have been doing for hundreds of years. Thank <laughs> you. 